of a polygon. The definition of area is the number of square units needed to cover a surface. Let's talk about some examples in real life where you might want to find the area of a surface. For example, if you had some really hideous lime green um, paint in your um, bedroom and you wanted to cover it with a wallpaper that you liked a lot better, you would want to find the area of your wall so that you would know how many square feet of wallpaper to buy to cover the wall. If you had a table and you wanted to make a tablecloth, you would measure the area of your table in order to know maybe how many square feet of fabric to buy. And finally, if you needed to plant grass seed in your yard, you might need to know the square footage of your um, yard in order to buy the appropriate amount of grass seed to cover your yard. To find area, you need to count the number of square units that a shape takes up. We can see here that it's um, we've drawn three shapes pretending that they are on graph paper and for each of them we're going to count the square units inside the shape. So for example this one we're going to see how many squares go inside this polygon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This um, shape, this eye, covers eight square units and notice that I have written units squared. That little two there you read as squared. This triangle here, we might want to first, we notice that it um, has some points where it's taking up part of a square unit. So the first thing to do is to find the total number of um, full square units. So I'm going to put a check in each of those um, boxes that are full. One, two, three, four, five, six full square units. And then you can see that this right here is a half a square unit and another half a square unit. So if I put those together, they would take up another one whole square unit, and these two together would take up another whole square unit. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight square units that this triangle takes up. So the area of this triangle is eight square units. And finally, sometimes we can find the area of shapes that aren't even really polygons, like for example this one that doesn't have straight sides. Um, and we could, we could estimate it. Um, so the first thing you want to do, just like we did with the triangles, find the total number of complete square units, or nearly complete. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and these are almost full. Let's count those two, nine and ten. All right, now let's see if we have any halves that are halves that we can put together. Um, here's a half. Let's mark that with half. Half, half, and that's almost half. All right. Oh, I forgot to count these down here as my full square units. I'm going to go ahead and put checks in those because those look full. And then I see that I have like these tiny little pieces. Well, I can sort of think about those tiny little pieces like this one, joining that one to make it a full square unit, or this piece joining this one. So I'm not even going to really count those. I'm going to let those take up um, help me make these full. So now I'm going to count my full square units and add them, then add in my halves. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. These together would make 14 and 15. So a good estimate for the total number of square units that this takes shape takes up is 15 square units. Remember that this one is an estimate, not an exact area. You'll need to know how to find the area of squares and rectangles even if you're not given the grid lines in the middle to count the boxes or the square units. Um, so the formula that we can use to find the area of a square is side times side. And let's see why that makes sense. This um, square has a side of 1, 2, 3, 4. So the length of the side is 4. And we learned in the previous video that squares have um, all sides equal. So this side would also be 4. And you know from studying multiplication that if you see a grid like this, or sometimes it's called an array, you can count the top 
and the side and multiply them together and have a quick way to know how many total boxes that there are. You've already done that um, kind of model in mul multiplication. So if we multiply 4, th this length, times this length, we will find that there are 16 boxes altogether. And we would get the same answer if we just counted them. So we can see that in any square that's going to work multiply the length of a side and the length of a side together to get the area of a square. So if we have a um, if we have a square here that we see is 7 meters on one side, remember it's 7 meters on all of the sides, but we can multiply the two sides together, 7 times 7, and we get an area of 49 meters square. So this um, square would have 49 meters square. The, um, there's a formula for the area of a rectangle that you will also use. Um, and you could, if you were just wanting to count how many uh, boxes were here, you know that you could multiply this many times this many, or the length times the width, okay? So the, the rectangle is three units tall, one, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, six units long. So if we wanted to see how many total square units there are, we would just multiply the um, length times the width, 6 times 3, which would give you 18 square units. So the formula for the area of a rectangle is length times width, or we might abbreviate it L times W. So in this rectangle that we have here where the grid lines are not drawn, we can multiply the length times the width, so we'll replace the L with the length which is 10, and the width, which is 3, 10 times 3 would be 30 square inches. And so if we were to fill in the grid lines, we would find 30 square inch blocks inside this uh, rectangle. Sometimes you're going to find polygons that are not squares or rectangles, but they're made up of squares and rectangles. And you can use what you know in order to find the area of them. This um, piece, this shape, for example, here, we can break it into smaller parts and still find its area. So you can see, um, I hope you see that this is a rectangle here, and then we have a, a square here. So if I divide these into two parts, now I'm going to work on finding the area of this sh polygon, the area of this polygon, and then adding them together. So this shape is a rectangle, it might look close to a square, but it's not a square because the sides are not exactly equal. So in order to find the area of this rectangle, I just need to multiply the length times the width. One kilometer is the length, and eight tenths of a kilometer is the width, and then one times um, eight tenths is just going to be eight tenths of a kilometer squared, a kilometer squared. Then we can also add that to the area of this square. And be, because the square has all sides equal, the formula is side times side in order to find the area. So I'm going to do 0 and 6 tenths kilometers times 0 and 6 tenths kilometers. And then we know well, for multiplying decimals, that at first you just think about it like a regular multiplication problem and you ignore the decimals. So 6 times 6 is 36. And then I have two digits behind the decimal place. So I place my, behind the decimal point. So I'm going to place my decimal point in the answer so that there are two digits behind the decimal point. So this is 0 and 36 hundredths of a kilometer is the area of this square. So in order to find the total area of this polygon, I just need to add them together. I'm going to take 0 and 8 tenths kilometer squared plus 0 and 36 hundredths kilometer squared. And I'm going to write, rewrite those vertically. Remember when that you add to make sure to line up your decimals so that you are adding um, place values together. And we know that we can ask decimal dog to put a zero there so that we have something to add it to. Zero plus six is six. Eight plus three is 11. Carry into the ones place. One plus zero is one. And then I'm gonna bring my decimal straight down. So the total area of this shape is one and 16 hundredths kilometers squared.
So let's do two problems where we're not given any models and we have to use what we know in order to find the area. First question says, how many one foot tiles are needed to cover a 15 foot by 25 foot patio? So here they're giving you the length and the width and they're asking you to find the area by saying how many square tiles can you place in that um, space to cover it up. So you might want to draw a model like you're looking at it from the top and have 15 feet by 25 feet and then all we would have to do in order to find the area of this rectangle is to do length times width or 15 times 25. 5 times 5 is 25, 5, 6, 7, five ti 2 times 15 is 30, and then if I add them together, my total is going to be 375 square feet. So it would take me 375 tiles to cover this patio. Next, I have a square window that is 6 feet wide. All right. So if I know that it's six feet wide and it's a square, all sides of that window are going to be six feet. How many square feet of fabric do I need to make a curtain that will cover the window? Well, this word cover here should be your clue that it's an area problem. And the formula for the area of a square is side times side. So I'm gonna multiply six times six and know that I would take 36 square feet of fabric in order to cover this window.